This is a Windsor chair. It's called a rod back chair. And it's called that rod back because of this lateral crest rail that's typical of this style. And then that crest rail connects to these two styles on the ends. And these, this particular design was popular in the late period of Windsor's, so about 1800. Um, now with all Windsor's, there's this issue of the compound angles and how do you get the accurate drilling of sockets for these legs because the leg from the side view is angled in one direction and then from the front view in another direction in another angle so how do you find that compound angle and then you notice these straight lines that are on the seat here. Those are called sighting lines. And for each socket, for example, this left front leg, there's a sighting line. So it means that I can drill that socket uh, with, with one angle being straight up and down. And as long as I'm on this plane, uh, that is made by this this line here then I can drill at one angle and and that, that makes the drilling quite easier to do so how do you get the sight lines in the book that John Casset wrote the book of American Windsor Furniture he shows a sketch of a front view and a side view of the rod back chair like this. And this view is not perspective, it's straight on uh, orthographic views, front and side. And he provides information about the angles of the legs. For example, over here in the front view, he shows a splay angle of this front leg at 104 degrees. And then he also shows the back leg splay angle at 101 degrees. These angles are in relation to the seat, the uh, bottom edge of the, of the seat as shown here. I've drawn in these red, this red information of lines and text. Now, in the side view, it's also, also orthographic view, and he shows a 91 degree angle between the seat and the, and the front leg here. That's a very shallow angle. Usually on Windsor's it's a little bit more than that, maybe a hundred or so degrees. It's always less than the back leg. So the back leg rake angle is shown on in, in the book at 109 degrees. And with these, with this information then, which is orthographic, I can work in SketchUp to find the single complex angle that the end, end create the sight line that allows me to really worry about only one angle at all in drilling the sockets. So we can go to the seat then. Here's the seat for this Windsor chair with the location of the socket centers on the top face of the seat. This seat is also uh, not canted backwards. It's, it's uh, level with the green axis. Let me just show you. Uh, this seat is, is on the green axis, so it's level.
it's not canted backwards. And the first thing I will do is to create a vertical straight line down on the blue axis. I'll tap the upper arrow key and I don't I'll just go down that far. It doesn't matter how far to go. And then I'm going to create a line on the red axis and come up to the center line creating this plane, a triangular plane that is like that front view that we saw in the scanned. So that angle in that view, I can pick the protractor and I want to find that angle 104 and I'm going to tap the left arrow key to hold that on the green plane and then the angle is 104 from the red direction in 104 so I'm going to 104 I'm typing that enter and I've got a guideline that I can trace over and now I've and um, now I need the angle that goes in 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 the side view and I've already got that blue line coming down so I can use it to create a green line and come up and create a plane now that is on the side view and that represents that's a 91 degrees that's a pretty shallow angle for for Windsor's but now I'm gonna go ahead that's what it the original chair had usually it's maybe a hundred but this will this will work and I want to be on this plane red and I'll tap the right arrow key to hold it and then I'm going to go 91 that's not going to be very far from vertical 91 right there that's a small plane and I'll go down and trace over that and then delete out the rest of this triangle. So uh, to get that compound angle, the single angle, what I do is intersect these two. I'll draw this, I'll bring this plane Uh, use the push-pull tool and bring that plane out a little bit and then use the push-pull and I have to tap the control key to make these little planes uh, solids and there there I've got that so the compound angle then is this intersection, this seam of these two solid pieces coming together. Now I could intersect those, but I could also just draw a line right down the seam. Right down this seam, right down to this, inter this corner end point here. And that's the real angle of the leg. So I can delete these other uh, edges and lines. And I'm going to delete right there there, 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 
and there. So this is this is the real angle, the compound angle for that leg. And now I want to create the, the siding line. So uh, what, what I would do here is double click the tape measure on that line and then go up high on this line and come down straight on the blue axis and go over here and connect there and then connect there and make a plane it's a new plane and the siding line is this intersection of the seat right here so I can edit the seat and draw a line here and uh, that is the siding line for drilling that socket and the angle I can measure here I'll hold hold that plane and then measure this angle right here and it says 76 degrees so that's the real drilling angle using the siding line uh, and I can delete the this triangle and and I can now take a leg and move it into position uh, on that center line for the leg and when I drill I'll set my angle gauge on the face of the seat at that angle 76 degrees or whatever it was and then drill straight down at that angle.